What's going on, Paisanos? V here, coming at you with another market watch today. Before we begin, I just want to say one quick thing. Normally, when I do these videos, actually, I, I do them on a program called OBS, and I actually preset the audio so it sounds nice and clear like you hear it right now. If you go back to my video yesterday, that wasn't done. Now, I don't know how long that's been like that, that I've been not doing my videos with my audio edits, but yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> so in case you want to hear the difference between audio, um, watch this video today, listen to it, and then go back to yesterday's video, and maybe the day before, maybe the day before that, and hear the difference in audio. Just something really cool to see, and uh, yeah, I didn't know about that at all. So sorry about that for those who have been listening to my videos, I, know I get a lot of people just listen to my videos, or have been watching my videos, and, and taking the volume and going, yeah, V, calm it down there, my guy. Uh, on today's market watch, before I begin, I want to say, guys, please make sure to subscribe, I'm subscribed to ready hit the like button and comment down below common question of the day when are we getting the balance <laughs> it's a question that's normally asked on forums and facebook and people at locals is going where are you going where are you going balance i'm getting the balance i don't know and they, and they go back and forth and they babble seriously though when we're we getting the balance now the, i'm gonna post it in the poll so click the poll up in this video it's somewhere in this video up top and it'll look like a little exclamation point i believe and um we're gonna we're gonna ask the question is it gonna be a day is it gonna be a couple of hours is it gonna be a week end of the month once again, guys, I would love to know when do you think we're getting the balance. Under the, under the rest of this video, though, look at that public judgment. One card that's currently banned, that if it came off the balance, what would happen? Would it, people go crazy? Would, 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 would Spellbooks finally come back after a long, 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 and I mean, like, really long uh, time of not seeing play since Dragon Rulers? Would Spellbooks actually see any kind of meta relevance or meta play? Look at my book of judgment from Tac Lord Tachyon Galaxy. This card used to be like a dollar. It was like a dollar, two dollars max. You're getting ripped off at two dollars. But even then, look at my book of judgment from Lord Tachyon Galaxy. Uh, secret rare version. The market price has this card set for six dollars. Now, my book of judgment unlimited. Obviously, it's going for a little bit less. That's about five for unlimited. Um, but when you go to first edition, uh, first edition versions of the card, they're starting at 850. After that one's gone, it goes to nine and quickly, and I mean quickly, goes up to for ten dollars for a secret rare banned card of judgment. That's only, that's only for Lord Attack and Galaxy. If you want 2014 Mega Tins, you're in luck. They haven't been bought out yet. But uh, the prices, the, the, the listings are dwindling, and the prices are also slowly increasing. With the $2 market price, we've actually seen with shipping included, Spell Book of Judgment hit about three dollars. So. If you don't have yours yet, you should have opportunity to get it. There's only two printings. 2014, yeah, no, 2014, almost six years old, uh, Megatons, as well as Lawyer Attack on Galaxy. Uh, um, next, guys, Super Rejuvenation. Now, this is something a lot of Yuga players are like, oh, V, it's never going to come back. I know, but I like to pretend it does. And what if it does? What would happen? What would it impact this card coming back? Well, for starters, would Dragon Link be good again? Not that it was ever bad, even though Nibiru just actually decimates that deck. But not that it's ever bad, but would Dragon Link be a good deck again? I want to talk about Super Rejuvenation. The only version and copy I'm talking about is the one that came out of Legendary Collection 4, Joey's World. Rarity is super rare, and it's a dollar eighty-five in the market price, which is around its current price point, roughly around $2. Once again, I do think this card can come back. I'm in that small boat of, I really do think this card coming in one would do nothing. The mar and, and by the way, in, in, in the case of Super Rejuvenation, in the case of Small Book of Judgment, and maybe some other cards I'll mention in this video, I do think that the cards will come off the ban list. Maybe not one. Konami loves bringing a card that's banned 2 1. It's like their new thing now. And the market goes crazy. Hype goes all over the place. And for the most part, it goes back down. In fact, in certain cases, it goes down to nothing. And in other cases, it might stabilize in the case of Super Polymerization, which is a very unique card in general. Uh, but moving forward, guys, looking at other cards like True King Lithosagum, The Disaster, coming out of Raging Tempest as well as 2017 Megatons, not too long ago, and the price point is reflecting that. Now, here's the question. Just like Super Rejuvenation, just like Spellbook of Judgment, can True King Lithosagum, The Disaster, go up in value? Yes. Yeah, just, let me stop you. Yes! <laughs> yes, it absolutely can. Now, we can say Smoke Good Judgment because it's secret rare, and I agree, yeah, maybe it has value because it's secret rare and because there's hype, sure. But uh, Super Generations are super rare, and we're slowly seeing go up in value. 
Well, in the case of True King Little Sagan the Disaster, I think it will naturally go up in value the longer it stays banned. And yeah, this card should stay banned for a very long time. This card's absolutely insane. But if it wasn't come off the balance, what would happen? Well, the value would increase immediately. But if it doesn't come off the balance, and as time goes on, and looking at other previously banned cards, they don't really get printed as much. I think True, Thing, True King Little Sagan the Disaster is a great card to get right now. You want this card to stay banned. You want to go in and buy a bunch of it at Raging Tempest, at First Edition, because it's so cheap and as time goes on as everyone figures out about this card people like me and maybe a future v will go in and talk about true thing little sagum coming off at a time in which maybe it's okay for it to come back and if it is okay for it to come back what could happen the value <laughs> the value goes up and this card actually becomes more expensive now this isn't this ain't no short-term mid-term gain this is very long term but something you might want to consider if you're, th you're doing a trade and you, and you already have a trade that's almost done and they have a true king lose side on the disaster what well, haven't thrown in the trade it's worth a couple of pennies literally they would do it to seal the deal in most cases you'll be surprised how many trades you get by adding a random band card to that trade that nobody cares about Moving forward, Summon Sorceress. Now, I, w I want to skip over this as fast as possible, but it, I just have to note, I do not, I, look at Summon Sorceress, it's newly banned, and rightfully so, the card definitely should stay banned. But, looking at Summon Sorceress, I'm not talking about the Soul Fusion version coming out to be rare. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the Show and Drop Magazine promo version of Summon Sorceress. Now, there's a bunch of lists over here, 55 prices on the TCG player. But look, just like True King Little Sagan Disaster, it can have the same effect. The higher rarity one, the harder to get one. And can we say Show and Drop Magazine promos are hard to get because they're not done anymore? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's hard to get cards. That falls on that category. But Summon Sorceress being a shonja magazine promo will not maybe possibly kind of have value it would absolutely and unequivocally have value in the future it will have value in the future if it does come off the ban list in the future because this will be the version that would spike high in value it would have value in the future of it, the hype of it coming off the ban list and the hype will increase the price point of a car like summon sorcerers most notably the version coming out of shonja magazine promos which once again like i said earlier you cannot get anymore moving forward emergency teleport now I want this to come off the banner so badly. I want this to come off the banner so badly because I think Psychics and Yu-Gi-Oh have gotten a bad rap. Uh, so, so uh, Emergency Teleport makes Psychics just really good. And decks that aren't Psychics even better, and I'll get to that in a second. But looking at Emergency Teleport, if it was to come off the ban list and we could have some new Psychic support, it'd be cool to see Psychics see play in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. It, it really does. Psychics becomes a deck very shortly. And then the key cards, like e Telly, it gets hit and then Psychics go away. Psychic cards uh, have been abused, though. e Telly has been abused in many decks in the past you know like teledad <laughs> and, and and now if you play teledad even if itali was at three you get absolutely decimated by the current meta but i think itali is a great card to maybe even consider coming back or maybe itali that's only for psychics and maybe with a uh, with a nomenclature saying hey you can only push someone out psychics for us this turn i think it'd be really cool to see itali come back to do that and in, in order to promote more psychic decks i think psychics are really fun to play and, and if you say oh, well v i don't know they, they are let me ask you a question have you played a deck that's pure psychic most players haven't like serene psychic witch uh, psychic Mag uh, magician is his name cleric how should i get cleric those cards it's really fun and, and the deck is really enjoyable to play definitely great for casuals by the way Anyway, moving forward on Emergency Teleport, obviously the Ultimate Red version is going high in value. And if e was come up the ban list, this will hit some insanely high numbers. We're talking effect velo numbers, because it'll be used as heavily as that, if not more. So I think e the Ultimate Red is a card, I think we just could pass on. Yeah, I wouldn't invest in it, to be honest with you. If I was you, I really wouldn't invest on it. Uh, it's just way too expensive right now. But e and other versions, like Legend Collection 5D, Secret Rare versions, they're about 4 to 5 bucks for e Secret Rares. That's not a bad price point. And, and with 27 price listings, that's not going to be around at this cheap price point for long. It will increase in value, unless Chromie reprints a virtue Teleport as a Secret Rare. Maybe in Prismatic Rare, which would be really cool, actually. Uh, but looking at other versions, like Dual Genesis versions of Emergency Teleport, the Ultra Rare Unlimited versions are about $3. You got an Ultra Rare version coming out of High Speed Riders. That's about 2 to $3. And that's about it. Uh, seriously, e is a great card. I highly recommend you guys, if you don't have any, grab a playset because it's a, you know, a hard to find card, to be honest with you. Moving forward, a card in which if e came to 3, the deck I would currently play, because I love this deck, Cosmos. Now, looking at Cosmos currently on the ban, the ban list, there's none of them. There's absolutely none. They're fully unlocked, but they're not seeing Metaplane. Why not? Well, number of reasons. Number one, 
Itali, if it was to be a three, would definitely promote this deck. And, and other decks, of course, but definitely promote this deck. Number one. Number two, the meta just doesn't need it, can easily deal with Cosmos. It doesn't need to see it as a problem anymore. And I think a lot of decks in the game of Yu Gi Oh!, whereas they used to, most likely don't care about having their cards destroyed by Cosmos Dark Destroyer. It just doesn't phase them. By the way, little fun fact comes Dr. Dr. Dre's price point is $18. It's stabilized, but wait, I think it'll be, I, I think it will price point will slowly go down even more. And then we'll talk about buying Cosmo Cores, because I personally want to buy my Cosmo Core. Uh, if you guys don't know, I've gotten rid of my Cosmo Dr. Destroyer when it hit to like $30, $35. And I sell everybody to do it, and right now I'm cosmo -less. But I do think Cosmo Dr. Destroyer price point is going to continue to go down in value. And maybe when it hits around 10s, maybe we'll go buy it, or maybe I'll go trade for it. But right now, I don't recommend you going and grabbing this. But yeah, I do think Cosmo Cosmos can definitely be a deck, and, and moving forward in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, by the way, uh, Cosmos is something that Konami, whenever they make new sets or new archetypes, has to always look at this, because this is a very unique kind of archetype, an archetype in which you can't really target things, but you really can, and if you do target things, you know, like Cosmo Tin Can uh, uh, or, or Cosmo Farm Girl, I could, I could do things while you look, at, so, like, you'd be like Dark Hole, and I'm like, okay, Farm Girl now becomes Destroyer, and Resolve Dark Hole, Destroyer becomes something else, and I'm just dancing around the field as you're resolving one card. Obviously, Dark Hole's not, not that good of a card in the meta, but you get my point. It, it's a very unique deck, and it, it's one of those like that, which, once again, Konami moving forward has to definitely look at Cosmos as, as something that, like, Okay, this this is good, but can Cosmos abuse it? You know what I'm saying? It's one of the first of many decks I think that Konami is looking at right now as the game progresses. That Konami has to go. Okay, does that does that does this? Does that does that does that make this deck broken? You know you know what I'm saying? I hope I don't get lost in translation. Okay, Ritual Beast Ulti Cannon Hawk is another deck, and Ritual Beast in general is another deck. And you can places you get really upset because of time rulings. And to be honest with you, if Ritual Beast was to come back right now, yeah. Every ritual police player, we sitting there going, uh, I can't wait to play a nice, even game of Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, 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 and they're gonna, they're gonna time rule you. And that, no doubt in my mind, would there be somewhere, somehow, a fist fight related to some ritual police player making a zillion moves, legal moves, by the way, and that's the scary part, they're legal moves, so it's not considered stalling, but he's burning the clock by making all these legal moves, some of which might make sense, some of which won't make sense, but if he's higher on light points, it doesn't even matter. Now, if Ritual Beast Ultimate Ken Hawk wasn't come up the bands, would Ritual Beast still see play? Probably, but I don't think as successful as they used to be. I think now with the introduction of new hand traps in this game, I think with the introduction of Dual Devastator, literally giving bullets in the guns of every Yu-Gi-Oh player to knock these decks away, if someone's playing Ritual Beast, they're just hoping to play at a locals and not even then not and probably not really win just to make top cut. I think Ritual Beast is really good still, but with hand traps, I, I don't know. And I would love to know guys if you, what do you think about that? Comment down below. But if Ritual Beast Ultimate Cannon Hawk wasn't come up the bands, well, what would happen? Well, the secret forces will actually start start having value and not just like secret forces value for uh necros but for other cards as well so it'd be really cool to see uh what would the value be of ken hawk right now it's 17 cents around a dollar but the price point can change for all these cards all these cards so it'd be really interesting to see that uh, moving forward, Dragon Rules. Of course, I'm gonna talk about Dragon Rules. With Tempest coming off the banners, and Tempest by itself, one Tempest making Dragon Link so good. For every short amount of time until Konami's like, oh, by the way, here's the Kryptonite for Dragon Links and everything that just wants to hit five or more plays in a turn. Um, besides that little nomenclature, I do think that uh, Dragon Rulers are still good, and I do think Konami's gonna be looking at Dragon Rulers when they're talking about magic cards? What? No. When they're talking about unlocking more cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't know why I did that. Um, I'm talking about unlocking more games of Yu-Gi-Oh! I think we can look forward at other cards that are not named Tempest, maybe even Blaster, or maybe Tidal, or Redox and look at the other dragon rolls and, and having them possibly come off the ban list. I don't think Blaster necessarily will be the one coming off the next one. I think that's going to be something maybe like a, a Tide or Redox. I want Tide to come off the ban list because I and I think it'll be smart for Konami to do it for Marine Cess. But then again, if Redox come off the ban list, I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever at, at all. And I think these are the next two to come off the ban list at one, of course. Could Konami bring out um, Tempest and put it to two or three? They absolutely can. I don't know if they would though. I think Konami slowly wants to bring Dragon Rulers back because why not? It's fun. And to see Tidal or Redux come off the ban list is really fun. Uh, moving forward though, Deep Sea Diva. Now, this is me saying, hi, you can make Deep Sea Diva, it can get stopped with, with almost any hand trap in the game, but if it goes off, it's gonna go off and it's gonna be good. It's, it's, it's literally like you activate, you summon Deep Sea Diva, you look at your opponent and you're like, summon good, and they're like, summon's good, and you're like, Activate and your points goes goes hmm. How can I just absolutely punish you for just making that dumb play you dumb 
not smart person. Y you're gonna get hurt. It's gonna hurt in real life. You gotta to go to the hospital after this fight. Like, like it, it's it, but but if it goes off, oh, you're gonna murder them. You're, you're gonna be like, you, you let me do something that I'm not supposed to do. I'm going to kill you. In game one and game two, this is this game's so I think DCD was really fun to do that. Anyway, looking at DCD, but also come off the bands, even come off the two, what would happen? Well, for starters, uh, you definitely better have a hair trap or you're gonna get ripped apart. And it's gonna be awesome and horrible at the same time. Uh, if anyone watching, it's, it's gonna be a spectacle. Um, mermaids and mermaids and, and I'm gonna say mermaids, mermaids and Atlanteans, they would have changed drastically because as we all know, that deck is a shotgun deck, meaning at the start of every meta, at the start of every format, the deck naturally just take, gives you your player regional invite. It always happens. It's been happening for years, and nobody really talks about it except on this channel. When I go, hey, we have a new ban list. Can't wait to see who it's a new mer player. Or Atlantean player gonna get the invite with because they're definitely gonna do it because the new balance and they always have done it But with DC Diva going to two or going to three that that extension of play Not just because of the beginning of the balance, but throughout the meta can actually make Mermels Atlanteans come back in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh again. It'd be really fun to see them back, right? Would it be fun? <laughs> well, with Nibiru, it would actually change the schematic of the game. So I would personally would love to see that happen. Of course, Konami doing this would be another little hint of going, hey there, you go player. You want to play Mermels? I mean, they're water. They're, they're, they don't really relate as good as, uh, not Mermels, I mean, uh, Marine says, they don't relate as good as Mermels do, but you know, but well, the fact that they, they don't, besides the fact that they're water monsters, there's nothing else. But nevertheless, still cool. So I, I would like to see it. Anyway, look at DC Diva. I'm, I'm just fantasizing, fantasizing. But look at DC Diva from Turtle Pack Booster 4 with a $17.50 market price. The actual price was roughly around nine, almost $19. But realistically, the one you want to go in for, the one nobody's looking at right now, is a Doodle Saga DC Diva. With a dollar market price, we're actually seeing a price point roughly around a dollar as well. It's matching, which in Doodle Saga almost doesn't happen for these cards. They're either really high in value or they're really low in value. And I really do think that with Deep Sea Diva, if you don't want to place it as card at the moment, you might be forgetting something like this card. <laughs> so I would highly recommend you go in and pick this card up. But once again, it's a dollar bond is special. Locals aren't looking at it. Stone owners aren't looking at it. Well, until they watch this video, because someone owners watch that video as well. Hi, how's it going, by the way, fellow Paisanos? Um, and then the card gets taken off the dollar binder. But until that moment happens, I would highly recommend you go in and grab this card because I do think it has great potential. Deng Long, first of the Yang Zing. And coming out of Invasion of Vengeance. Only is it only in printing Invasion of Vengeance? Hold on. I felt like it was a Mega Ten reprint, wasn't it? Uh no, I'm wrong. Okay. So Deng Long, first of Yang Zing. Not only Mega Ten, only printing. <laughs> I know this for a fact because I just looked it up. Look at Invasion of Vengeance versions of copies of this card. Current price point is three dollars and sixty cents in the market price. And let you play on limits roughly around four bucks. Uh, first of the virgins, not too far along, roughly around four dollars as well for a dong, for a dang long, long, long. Okay, so the question is, does this come off the ban list? I think it should. I, I not only do I think it should, it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna do anything. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. Day one, Denlock's gonna off the ban list. Everyone freaks out, everyone goes crazy. Uh, Yang Zing plays, the four of them, including my, my good friend, uh, who I know in real life, one of my good buddies I know in real life, is a huge fan of uh, Yang Zing's, are like, yes! And then nothing happens. <laughs> the value of Denlong spikes up a, cr a crazy high. Yu Gi Oh players try to introduce uh, Denlong into their decks, fail miserably. You know what, with Nibiru and all the good hand traps in the game, and how the game is drastically different from when Invasion of Vengeance came out to how the game currently is now. Yeah, I don't think it will do much. Value go high, value goes low, value stabilizes higher than the current market price, and when points at it goes, hey, it could probably fit in. No, it's okay. And that's how the game of Yu Gi Oh works. I don't think this card's gonna be that impactful, though I will say, I I think this car is definitely a great alternative for when i don't know chris on needle fiber comes out maybe you know you know right there that might be a thing but let's be honest we're never getting chris on needle fiber you go players it's just not happening make peace with it i made peace with it uh after the recent spoilers we're not getting chris on needle fiber and that's okay it's it, it's fine no it's 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 fine it's it's come on konami anyway uh look at sp or terra top ots one pack three ultimate rare versions are Kind of calming down a little bit. With the twenty-two dollar market price, the current price point of OTS Tournament Pack Three Spear Terra Top Ultimate Rare, mind you, is actually roughly around twenty dollars. Now that's still relatively high, but the same token, if Konami brought OTS Tournament Pack Three Spear you know, Ultimate Rare Spear or Terra Top off the balance, or even at two, even at two, okay, even at two, let's got, let's got, let's got, get too excited. Even at two, Spear or Terra Top Ultimate Rare, what would happen? 
Well, immediately, Yu Gi Oh! players will be looking at Burning Abyss players. Burning Abyss players will be looking back at Yu Gi Oh! players going, You just gave me a shotgun and, and, and told me to fight in a knife fight. I'm gonna murder everything. Will it make the deck a lot more better? Yes. Will it make the deck tier one? No. Unless you are an amazing Yu Gi Oh! player, you'll be putting it back in that tier 1.5 category as an amazing Yu Gi Oh! player. Most Yu Gi Oh! players playing uh, Burning Abyss would most likely see tier two play. Let's be honest, it's just how it is. Though I will say, it'd be really cool, Konami, it'd be really bro of you. <laughs> If like you broke spirit tears off to two and then you're like, you know, that's still a graph card We're gonna put that to two as well We're the Konami. That's right. We, we've done everything amazing. Here's amazing things for you your place It'd be really cool It'd be kind of like making up for things like messing up on crystal need five best prismatic rare in the previous set I didn't mean that cool Nevertheless, look at Spirit Terra Top. The current price point would obviously be modified and changed if it was to go to balance at two, which is another great indicator that this, which is another great, uh, not an indicator, but it's another great, um, thing for anybody holding Spirit Terra Top uh, Ultimate Rare, uh, currently right now. If you're not holding it, it's 20 bucks. It's, it's, it's an investment. And, you know, I don't have to tell you what an investment is. Just Google it. You're on the internet, obviously. <laughs> Uh, up next, Silent Night Talimaeus, Ultimate Rare coming out of Cross Souls. Silent Night Talimaeus is a great card that can definitely come off the bandits because it would do absolutely nothing, except go high in value and quickly die down. Current price point of the Ultimate Rare is roughly around four dollars fifty cents on the market price, and when we look at Light Play Unlimited, it's about four bucks. In fact, when we go to page two where the first user version is, it's not that; it's like eight bucks. So yeah, first user is worth more. But dead serious, if I, if I had to go in right now, if you said V, go in, what do you do with Talmud Taneus? Do you buy the the unlimited version or the ulti? Well, ulti is $8. $8 is more than double the price point of an investment, which is kind of crazy if you really think about it. Uh, I would go for this $4 version. I would snipe it real quickly, and that would be the price point I'd be buying Talmud ulti, ultis at. I will buy unlimited, $4 all day long. Because if it was to go off the ban list, my investment, my initial investment, would actually spike even higher than if it was for the first version versions, which are about $8. Now, I do think you'll make more with the first version versions, but it's not saying you will not sell the unlimited versions. Does that make any kind of sense to you guys? That's If you want to make a cheaper investment, obviously, ideally, you want to go for first edition versions, but if you want to make a cheaper investment, I would go on limits. Anyway, why should this card come off the ban list? Because it wouldn't do much in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I know some Yu-Gi-Oh players would go, guys, V, you're insane. Tell me time this would break Yu-Gi-Oh. No, it won't. No, no, it really, it really wouldn't. I, I think the card's very good. I think the card's insane. But I think we're in a meta of just like 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 this card is an axe murderer, but yet we're in a meta we're in we're in a meta, which is like Freddy Krueger dot card. We're in a meta with so many good cards. You start telling me this card coming back is gonna be really crazy? Hi, um, I'm Thunder Dragons. I don't care. Oh hi, I'm Sky Strikers. I have Pot of Greed that's built into a card, but I get to search first if I have three spells, which my deck is full of spells, and then I'm gonna draw a card. I'm like Pot of Greed, and Pot of Greed was saying, Hi, I'm a broken card. And I'm a three! You know, ban list. Don't hit me, bro. So I know I do think this card's really good, but there's so many better cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I think this card was come back and would be that impactful. Oh, mind you, Teller Knights. <laughs> uh, moving forward, Hobby's Fell Duster. Now, this is one card that I really want to come off the balance. And I think everybody does as well. I think we're ready for it. I think anybody playing combos ready for it. And I think any player who's playing control, if you get destroyed by Hobby's Fell Duster and you're not holding a, a good hand trap, well, your deck's not fully done. I think I think control players will be modified now to both hold hand traps as well as regular traps. I think it's almost a thing. In fact, looking at all the previous deck lists, uh, any kind of control player is doing that. They're already having a bunch of hand traps as well as a bunch of regular traps in their deck because if they lose their back row, they're gonna need those hand traps or they're gonna lose it's that it's that easy and if you play hand traps it slows the game state down and what you want to happen if you're a control player because you're playing a game of attrition you're playing chess when your opponent's playing checkers okay so look at Harvey's Philester the current market price is seven dollars and sixty cents that was last hype market prices by the way it's it's definitely went down a little bit for unlimited for, for the unlimited versions of the card I think yeah it's about like, for for a lightly played unlimited version, it's like fifteen bucks. <laughs> it's down by a couple of dollars, not by a lot. But I do, and, and the weird thing about Harvey's Feather so by the way, last ban it was like twelve bucks. I kept talking about it. And now we're seeing over here once again lightly played. It, it went down for a little bit. But but real quickly, I just want to really emphasize that it quickly goes back up higher in value. Oh wait, hold on a second. Actually, it's going up here. Uh, there's one over here for twelve lightly played limited. So that's one over there. That one's gonna probably be gone by the time you're watching this video. So though, there's that. Um, but it also goes to 16 and then beyond the $17 price point uh, for Harvey's Feather. And this is only for the Prismatic version of Harvey's Feather. Stuff. There's other versions, obviously. Um, I think Prismatic Secret Rare is definitely the better, best version out there. But there's also a Secret Rare version, which are roughly around 11s, under $13 market price. Um, 
You got the regular rare versions, which are sevens under its nine dollar market price. Uh, Starfire, which actually went up a little bit to about nine cent. The super rare version, which is just it makes no sense it's just absolutely insane anyway looking at how you felt this i think it's a card that everybody should own in any version of copy i didn't wish uh konami uh was gonna would have had it in dual devastator which would have been really cool it, it would have been almost a no brand in that in that case if konami had harpy's feather certain dual devastator as an ultra rare because then you, you get a place and be like okay so it's gonna come off the balance or same thing with like max c that's why this balance is so special and unique because we have zero idea what's gonna happen we have zero idea what's gonna be changing but we know it's gonna be changing because the meta is currently been like this for a while and i think konami definitely knows that and wants to change it to get, get us ready for a new tier one meta but i do think the, um the fact that these have not been reprinted as ultra and dual devastator is definitely a shame uh for Yu-Gi-Oh players that don't have these cards and and we'll see off the bands we now have to be forced to get these cards at their of course high prices moving forward electric knight so one of my favorite pendulum cards that's not meant for metal foes. I mean, you can play metal foes, but no, uh, it's heavy metal foes electric knight. I think this is a great card. I think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players uh, that are playing pendulums obviously wish this card came to three. It's not gonna happen. But if it was come to two, it'd be really cool. Now once again, take put yourself in the mind of Konami. You're, you, you're looking six sets down the line, and you want to promote a new pendulum deck. What better way to promote a new pendulum deck than to put this card in two? Obviously, you want to hit other cards, meaning possibly Guard Dragon LP or. Agapain, as well as other cards, so the pendulums won't become too insane right off the gate. But playing Electro Knight like 2 would be really cool for pendulum players six months on the line that are getting a new arch type, a new support, or, 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 or maybe a mixture of both that can make pendulums good again. Mind you, pendulums aren't bad right now, but they're they're forced to play almost one of two builds, and they're both all right, but I'm not crazy about them. I don't think a lot of Yuga players are. I think Yuga players are ready for, especially Pendulum players, are ready for a new game mechanic. And right now, having Electro Knight at 1 doesn't help that. But if it was to go to 2, it would definitely change. By the way, the price for Electro Knight has already changed. Uh, Elect Elect Electro Knight used to be like 4 bucks. I know when I got mines, they were $4. I think maybe I paid 5 for 1 and 4 for the 2. Anyway, it was really cheap. Looking at how you film... Metaphors Electro Knight right now, the current price point is roughly around seven dollars, a little bit higher than six seventy two market price. And even if you want the twenty eighteen Megaton version of Electro Knight, well, that's also gonna run you around seven dollars. These price points are currently increasing the value. It'd be cool Konami made another Megaton that had prismatic reprints of Electro Knight. It'd be amazing, but uh, yeah, now we're about. Uh, 11 months off from that one all right moving forward spirals now spirals are getting support and we're excited about them and the price points are kind of reflecting that but they're cooling so looking at spiral big gear big red i talked about i think a week or two ago the price point the market price is roughly around 850 we're seeing cool to roughly around seven dollars um uh, and and cool i mean it doesn't really do anything because we're not getting that support yet japan's excited about the support they're gonna be getting though i will say and this is very important to mention spires is randomly topping getting Yu-Gi-Oh players their invites and tops right now as this video is happening in fact you go right now online look around there's spiral deck lists that are playing either spiral orcus spiral dangerous spiral danger orcus you know spirals and they're getting you can play as your regional invite tops so if you do want to play a deck like spirals you can still get your invite you can still do it you can still go into long-standing combos as long as your opponent have nibiru you know that's probably how those deck players are doing it but even th th there's other ways and then also uh, and, and one of the other ways is by playing cards like sign of mining by playing that nightmare monster who ibli ibli i've always forget the name and doing it that way and that also is how spiral players are getting around it in fact recently we just saw that happen but moving forward looking at spiral double helix coming out of circuit break it's the only printing the market price of this card is actually stabilized at five dollars it's not moved both uh market price and both um lightly played for student price points are roughly around five dollars for double helix it's coming down from its hype and it's gonna continue to calm down it's gonna continue to go down in value same with super agents which, which i thought was gonna go a lot higher and when you can see over here the third listing is about five hundred uh, 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 higher than it's three dollar market price but as you move down you can see it slowly and immediately starts going lower and lower in value for super agents spiders is still a good deck they're still fun to play they're not they're definitely tier two by the way once again the same thing like burning abyss and all these other decks in which if you get a phenomenal play it's 1.5 but it's not tier one you understand and i think with spirals that's the case they're in currently right now there's different mixtures of the deck and it's really fun to play and maybe you go to certain Yu-Gi-Oh places that's not you know the major Yu-Gi-Oh places like california texas florida and new york i'm talking i'm looking at you nebraska uh you can still top with spirals pretty relatively easily to be honest with you 
and, and, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if Spyro's top uh, was it. I think it's next week or this no this weekend. Uh, the Columbus Regionals, or maybe even the uh, the Pro Play Games event happening, is to see Spyro's top. I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever to be honest with you, because the deck is still very good. The deck still has a lot of combo, a lot of tech around it. But realize once again, you're playing with a tier two deck, and if you're that good of a player, you're still putting a handicap on yourself as a tier one point five uh, deck uh, into the event. Moving forward, Sign Up Mining is slowly going up in value. Of course it is. Sign Up Mining coming at Dark Neo Storm with a $39.90 market price is roughly around $41 to almost near $42. In fact, after that, after these couple of listings of $41 is gone, it's going to be hitting around $43 for Sign Up Mining. The page bombs out. Page 1 bombs out. Roughly around $45. So you can see over here, it's war. So, Sign Up Mining obviously is a card you good players are looking at. Sign Up Mining is a card that you good players are looking at. They want to play a Nightmare Variant in their deck. Run into that bleed combo where your opponent can't Nibiru, which is really good. We'll see how that works after the balance. As well as Sign Up Mining being good for Marine Sets, which we don't know if it's good or not. We have zero idea if it's good or not. And you good player says Marine Sets is really good and really bad. is speculating. That's it. And I hope Marine Sets is good. I hope it's a new Tier 1 deck. Because we're kind of due for that. I don't think it's going to be, but I could hope. And I think everyone else out there can do as well anyway looking at sign up mining it's definitely due for a reprint and it just recently came out of a dark neo storm i do think this card price will still continue to be a high price point card being the fact that it's a secret at dark neo storm and it's gonna be before a long while before we get another reprint set i mean let's talk about it let's just pause for a second we just we're getting dual devastated this this uh this friday this weekend we just got the 2019 megatons we just got dual power we just got legendary collection kaiba all these reprints within the span of a couple of months. Is Konami gonna go, hey, you know what? You know, we just did a bunch of these reprints. You know what's better than those? More reprints. That's not gonna happen. I think it's gonna be a, while before, a long while before we get a reprints. I think we're gonna be getting core sets that might have one or two reprints, and if we're lucky, we'll get sign of mining. But as far as a mass reprint set, after this Friday, we're probably not gonna see one for a while. But looking at Sign Up Mining, I do think it's a possible chance that it can still come out as a core set reprint, maybe even super rare. But right now, as it stands, this is gonna be an expensive card. So if you have it, it's gonna be stable value, but not long standing value. Moving forward, Nightmare Cup. I was talking about this card. Hey, how's it going? Um, this card, I think, first of all, this card definitely should have got hit by the ban list. This card's it, not not because it's that insane, because it stops Konami's other card they're trying to promote, Nibiru, but uh, and also stuns a lot of players, which is something really weird. But Nightmare Cup should believe should have got hit back in like Gokies. But looking at the card currently right now as it stands, the flexible structure secret round limited price point is roughly around six dollars. Under this eleven dollar price point, you got twenty eighteen Gold Star Ultra Rare versions all over the place for about three dollars, which is a little bit higher than this two dollar market price i still think this is a great card i think anybody who has access to corruption ibli and side of mining has access to a really nice way to still combo look at any one holding nibiru and go hey how's it going there and just fully combo just murder them i really do think that's really cool to still do right now though i will say with the banners things will get shaken up and i wouldn't be surprised if one of these key pieces are modified or hit in any way shape or form i would like to see side of mining hit so it becomes cheaper for everybody that'd be kind of cool but realistically, I think if you're Konami, you want to hit Nightmare Cup Double because this card's really good in those matchups, and I think it has a lot of potential. And if none of these are hit, well, after the balance, you might want to come back and look at these two cards. Okay, up next, Marine Test Wave. So as you can play, get more excited for cards like Sign of Mining, Marine Test in general, with the new support coming out in the new set at the end of the month. Marine Test Wave is a card you can play starting to target. Marine Test Wave coming out of Rising R Rampage as an ultra rare has a dollar sixty market price, but the actual price point is roughly around almost there five dollars. Pitch bombs up roughly around six dollars, by the way. And there's not many walls. You got a bunch of sixes over here, but that's the current price point of six dollars. Oh, market to be okay look at marine says wave i think this card's really good but anybody that's looking at marine says already has marine says waves and anyone buying right now that's increasing the pri price point of marine says wave or marine says in general yeah i would wait i would wait because two things one the card gets the, the meta the deck sees meta play and gets really excited the value is going to hit in dumb numbers and come back down to low value because marine says wave is not the chase card marine says cards that are secret rare are the chase cards waves not one of them unfortunately so i think this card will go back down in value in a big way after its initial spike that's number one number two the deck says zero play and i just saved you five bucks high fives okay moving forward um looking at dual devastator obviously we got to keep continue talking about this because the values are constantly changing in dual devastator Devastator. When we first look at Dual Devastator, the pre-order prices were all over the place. In fact, Ash Joy Spring pre-order price was around four to five dollars. Looking at it right now, it's the new expensive, most expensive card at Dual Devastator, and its price point six dollars and thirty cents. 
Let me explain something to you guys. Dual Devastators MSRP price points are $40. And the most expensive card you can get out of $40 Dual Devastators is a $6 card. Now, most I want to note real, real quickly, you're going to get one of all these cards. So you will be getting a $5 Super Polymerization. Wait, what's this? You have Super Poly? Okay, yeah, no, $6. <laughs> Uh, look at other cards you got effect field which is roughly around four dollars but it got common reprinted all over the place so it's most likely you your players who are buying dual devastator are not buying it for effect failure they're not probably most likely not buying it for super polys even though they should have sold it and definitely should have did this that's what i'm doing um we're most likely buying from the alternate art ghost girl hand traps and if we're looking at alternate art ghost girl hand traps well once again guys tcg player link below buy the singles of dual devastator do not buy it sealed you're not gonna get your money's worth you're just it's just not gonna happen you're gonna lose money so looking at Ash from joy spring ghost girl alternate art hand traps it's six dollars these are trade bait but since everyone's opening dual devastator supposedly the values of these cards are all going to tank in value ash might be the one that will hold the most value but nevertheless the most valued card being six on the 40 dollar box doing my mathematics real quickly uh that makes no damn sense to buy sealed anyway they're looking at, at other cards like Savage Skulldra at three bucks. I think it's past its prime. Nobody, people kind of want it, but don't really care about it. Uh, Ghost Ogre being the other hand strap. That's three dollars, four dollars with shipping, of course. Four dollars for Ghost Girls, Ogre, and Snow Rabbit. And by the way, at your locals, it'd be valued at three. Then you got Red Blast, Blah, Red Blossom uh, from Underroot, being roughly around three dollars as well. New hand trap, three dollars. You got other cards that call but a gray. By the way, we got a Prismatic Secret Rare, so this version doesn't matter. But cool, hey, another Ultra version. Okay. Does nothing. Uh, Ghost Bone Holder Mansion being around two dollars. Okay, that's fine. Hi, um, weaker version of DD Crow. By the way, DD Crow being used at the YCS. Those players at the YCS in Fort Worth had access to Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, but instead of playing that card, hmm, they played DD Crow. Why is that? Because it's just a better hand trap. This is something I have a uh, conversation I have with a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players. Our list of dragons are the most dominant deck in which Ghostbound Haunted Mansion is obviously way better. DD Crow is almost better in every other scenario and case. Oh, and Prank Kids. Uh, Ghostbound is better against Prank Kids against than DD Crow is. Anyway, but everything else in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, like, I don't know, Orcus? Uh, yeah, Ghostbound Haunted Mansion is okay against it. DD Crow just totally obliterates that deck. It's Exodia for... Orcus players. Anyway, uh, other cards like they're going to be one is about two dollars, which is you know, the ultra rare. It's currently as I, as I was talking about in yesterday's market watch. If you could hear it, is is uh the ultra rare is is a lot lower than a, than the other price point of the super rare from original print. Obviously, being a higher price point because we don't have this yet. But once we get access to all these cards, and that's one thing I want to go over just unanimously. Once we get access to buying dual devastators, those who will be buying it will be listing these cards online, which will be taking these cards price points. And when the card price points tanks, you don't need to buy the sealed boxes you just go ahead and buy the singles that's it it's that simple if you're sitting here going v should i buy dual devastator let me ask you a question do you like shiny boxes and losing money yes okay come this way i can show you a ton of dual devastator it looks really nice and yeah no you, it, that's it <laughs> or would you like to have the opportunity the grand opportunity to actually save money go online buy the singles and actually get exactly what you want from the boxes because if you already have cards like super poly why would you want to buy ultra rare versions if you have secret rare versions or if you have super rare super polys why would you want, what, what, would like to buy the ultra rares that everybody has when well, super rares are just a lot harder hard to find why would you want ultra rare dual devastator effect failures if you had ultis why would you want ultra rare dual devastator effect failures when you have i don't know a, the other ultra rare which is way better from dual saga savage and skull dread why are you playing that card i mean yeah if, if you are playing combo it's a great card to play but Seriously, why are you playing this card? And then Ghost Ogre Snow Rabbit Ultra Rare? That's great! I'll put it in my collection of other Ghost Ogre Snow Rabbits that are Ultra Rare as well. Ah, they all look so beautiful. Uh, Red Blossom with Under Loot? No, I can't even say that card name properly. And Corbett your Ultra Rare? Perfect. Just perfect. Don't need it, but you know, looks good. Anyway, Puzzle, it's your boy V. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Hopefully, my sound sounds way better in this video than previous videos. Go back and let me know if you, uh, how it sounds. I know it's d totally... I don't know why they're... By the way, I have zero idea why the settings did this. I just realized that yesterday, after the video uploaded, that something was wrong with the sound. It took me like an hour to figure it all out. So hopefully, like I said, it sounds a lot better. Paisanos, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. I really do. I I, I know I, I want to do more videos and different styles of videos. I've just been really busy. I'm trying to, have to make some time 
to do more videos for you guys because I really do enjoy and love this game a lot. And I really do want to have the opportunity to show you guys more videos of the game that I love so much and has drastically changed my life and has most likely has done for you guys. And if you guys want to stick around and see not just market watches every single day, but other videos about Yu-Gi-Oh, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the little notification bell to let YouTube know what's good. And of course, comment down below. Answer the comment question of the day. When are we getting the mail list or anything else? What do you think about dual deficits? What do you think about some of these banned cards here? What do you think about TCG Player's new change on the site, which looks definitely different? I'm not a big fan of it. Then again, the, the, the site constantly up, uh, they constantly like do upgrades and updates, and I have to upload videos later on in the day because of it. So thanks. I was really weird, but it's a good company. It uh, it recently sent me a check, which I thought was pretty cool. And uh. Yay. <laughs> I don't know, guys. You guys let me know in the comments section down below. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Your boy V and you boys You right there. You boys have a great day.